All right, you're good. Thank you. Oh, well. All right, so uh, homework from yesterday. Any questions on this? I didn't get number two. Number two, that's the one that needs to get the Renaissance. The Renaissance is the time period that comes after the Middle Ages. That's when all the science stuff started to happen. What else? All right, numbers four and five. Number four is Robert Boyle. Number five is Antoine Lavoisier. Those two guys might come up on a quiz somewhere. I might ask you like what it says here, or I might say who are the most two, two most important guys in the history of chemistry. You gotta know Robert Boyle. You gotta know Antoine Lavoisier. Could be on a test this, this month. Could be on your final, possibly. So make sure you know those two guys. If you don't know anybody else. All right. Uh, if there are no further questions, we can pass it up. When we pass it up, put yours on top of the one from behind you so that they're in alphabetical order. If they're in alphabetical order, then I'll be happy when I grade them. And that means you get higher grades. No. All right, so let's get started. We're going to talk more about safety now. Safety is very boring, but if we don't talk about it, then there's a higher chance that you would die. We don't want that to happen, so we have to do this. First thing I want to talk about is stuff you do before the lab. Okay, so rule number one. Read lab. while we're setting up, you should read through and get an idea of what we're going to do before you start so you have an idea of what you have to be careful with and you know, what kind of things you got to look out for. Number two, know the location of safety equipment. Yourself, how am I going to know that? The answer is I want to tell you. So in the front corner of the room near the exit, there's a fire extinguisher. This is a dry chemical fire extinguisher. That means it sprays a powder. The powder displaces the oxygen, and that's what makes the fire go out. You always put a fire extinguisher on the ground when you use it. You point it at the base of the fire. The base means the bottom. So if the fire is on the floor and some liquid burning, then you would spray it at the floor so you're covering the liquid with that powder. Um, and that's what these are best for, for liquid fires, gasoline or oil or alcohol, something like that. To use it, you got to pull this pin out. There's a piece of plastic, so you got to pull hard, right? Aim it at the fire, spray it, and that's it. This is going to make a lot of dust and a big uh, mess. It's going to be hard to breathe, so know that ahead of time. If there is a fire, I don't want you to use this. I want you to get out of the room and leave. If you have to use it, then use it. You know that there's going to be a lot of dust from that thing. We have two eye washes. This is the backup one that's here at the sink. You just grab it, you don't have to turn the sink on, and it squirts water out of it. And there you go. You can rinse your eyes with that. The main one is over here. Right here. It's got these little caps on top. You just stay closed to keep it clean. And if someone if you need to use this, just push this down. And that just shoots water out. This one doesn't work very well. And do that. So if somebody spills chemicals in their eyes, you take them, because obviously they can't see at that point, walk them over here, put their face into this, turn this on, and help them rinse their eyes off. Above me, I have the shower. The shower, if you spill chemicals on yourself, you get under here, you pull it down. It does work. 
convince yourself for either five or ten minutes until you get all the chemicals on. Okay, there's another fire extinguisher back there, same thing. Pull the pin out, even at the fire spray. I think that one's a CO2, you can see it has a big nozzle. And then the fire blanket. If one of your friends is on fire, you take this blanket, you throw it on top of them, put them on the ground, and pat the fire out with the blanket. You think that really works? Huh? That really works? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so too. I mean, it's not going to hurt to try. They're already on fire. So. All right. Tie up loose hair. Jewelry. And clothes. And this all has to do with, you know, fire and also not knocking over a beaker if it's on top of something. So if you got like a shirt with one of them big sleeves that hangs down, you're picking something up. You can knock a Bunsen burner over, you can get it caught on fire. Your hair can catch fire if you're leaning over and you're near the Bunsen burner. Um, jewelry could knock over a beaker or so on. So tie everything up. Again, remember to bring your own rubber bands if you want nice ones. Otherwise, you get the crappy ones from me. All right, number four, put goggles on. Always put on goggles before we start the lab, before you get the chemicals out before you pour them, before somebody else gets their chemicals out, put your goggles on. Goggles will probably be the biggest thing. Like if you remember nothing else I say today, which you probably won't, remember to wear your goggles. Do not have them on your head like this. This is stupid. It doesn't help you. It'll protect your forehead, but that doesn't really matter. You may want to put them on your eyes. You'll forget them here. People do it all the time, and you'll go blind, and you won't be able to see, and they'll fire me, so make sure you put them on the right way. All right, last one for before the lab, number five, no open shoes. So you can't have sandals, you can't have open toes, you can't have the top of your foot open, things like that during a lab. Shoes are not, you know, made of steel, but they will protect you somewhat if you spill chemicals on yourself. And your legs and your feet is most likely where they're going to go as they're, you know, dripping down the table. So the more uh, anything that's between you and the chemicals, the better your skin's going to survive. So the more clothing, the more shoes, the better. All right, during the lab, only do what the lab says. So I'll give you a paper that'll tell you what to do for this lab. The most important thing here that I'm trying to tell you is don't mix chemicals that aren't supposed to be mixed. If it says mix A and B, then mix A and B. If it doesn't say mix A and B, don't do it. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's not likely we're going to use a lot of stuff that's going to blow up or do off poisonous gases. But every once in a while, if you mix the wrong things together, you can give off poisonous gases, right? Ammonia and bleach, that will give off poisonous gases and kill you. You don't want to mix things unless you're supposed to. Number seven. Tell me about any accident. This is like your uh, lesson for life here, right? The sooner you tell me, the better off it is. If you try not to tell me about it, it makes it much worse in the long run, right? You get in more trouble, and plus, you know, who knows what can be going on. All right, so always tell me anything that happens. Number eight, never. Take off your goggles. Just like the third time I've mentioned goggles already, if you're getting the idea that goggles are important, right? Your eyes are much more sensitive than your skin is. Certain chemicals like acids, if you splash them in your eyes, you might have to take you to the hospital. Other chemicals like sodium hydroxide, for example, if you get it in your eyes, we'll still take you to the hospital, but it's kind of pointless because you're already blind. So you know, you want to try to make sure you don't get stuff in your eyes. Number nine, don't use more than you need. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, if there's an accident, if you spill a chemical on someone and they're, you know, burning their skin and <coughs> scarred for life, if you only spill a little bit on them, then they got a small scar for life. If you spill a lot on them, they got a bigger scar, right? So the less you have, the less damage you're going to cause if you spill or mix the wrong chemicals and they explode or something like that. So try not to use too much stuff. If I tell you to get five milligrams, get five, or five grams, get five grams. What is that, five milligrams? Very little. Anyway, uh, no eating or drinking in the lab. Okay, so you're probably thinking this is one of those rules that might just irritate you. And there are rules like that, this isn't one of them. Um, so here's what happens, right? This is a beaker. It's about the size of a cup or a glass. It feels like a glass, right? You stand here, talk to your buddies, you're drinking your coffee. Suddenly you grab the wrong one, you drink it, and you know, and you die, right? So that could happen. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what's the odds I'm going to pick up the wrong thing? But if you're not paying attention, right, and this happens all the time, you're not paying attention, you're just looking over here talking to your friend, it's very easy this could happen. In fact, I'll tell you a story where something like this happened. Right? I was in the Navy, me and four, three other guys used to have a house, and a couple of these guys used to like to chew tobacco, right? Disgusting habit. Now, when people chew tobacco, what do they do? They spit, right? They spit constantly. Oh, no. yeah, you know where this is going, right? Oh, no. <laughs> so these guys would take an empty bottle, and they'd say, hey, hey, wait, this is my story time, not yours. All right, so they take an empty bottle, and they start spitting into it, right? And over time, that bottle would fill up with spit. And, and it was always like, you know, the tobacco with the mint flavor, so it was more disgusting spit than usual spit. And so one day, I'm sitting there, and I go for my drink, and I pick up the wrong bottle, and I take a big drink of somebody's disgusting, spit, minty flavored tobacco juice. Ew. Yeah, and somehow I couldn't make myself throw up it. I don't know. But anyway, the point is you can pick up the wrong thing and drink it. So would you swallow it? Yeah, yeah a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad day. Anyway, so don't drink in the lab. <laughs> All right, number 11. Don't use chipped or cracked glass. This is America. We can afford to buy new beakers if we crack them. I don't want you using anything with even the smallest chip on it. We're just going to throw it away. I don't want you to cut yourself because if you do, your parents will sue the school. When I get in trouble, more paperwork, you know, it's a problem. All right, number 12. When you start a fire, and starting a fire, light the match first. Alright, so not every science teacher agrees on this, but this is how I like you to do it. You always light your mesh first, then you turn on your Bunsen burner and light it. Because here's what happens. They'll have somebody, they'll turn this on, it's blowing gas into the room, and then they'll start a conversation with their buddy or they can't figure out how to use a match. It takes them a half hour all that time to blow gas gas into the room. Now this is a well ventilated room, but still we don't want to be filling it up with gas and have some big explosion, right? So you light the mesh first. These things are open when it points the same way as the gas jet. They're closed when it's perpendicular in either direction. This is closed and this is closed. So what you're going to do is first you're going to light the match. Put your finger on top of here. I don't care what anybody told you, this is how you do it. You push it in here and light it. And you put it next to it. If you put it above it, it's going to blow out. So you put it next to it, turn this on, right, and light your thing. And then afterwards, if you want to make it hot, you open up the air down here. And that will make it you know, get nice and real hot. And you don't need this to be that big, do it. Just make it small. And uh, while we're dealing with these things, just so you know, the tip of the inner cone, that dark blue, that light blue inner cone, that's the hottest part there. So don't stick your finger there. Um, don't stick your finger in any of it, especially up there. All right. So that's it for fun. <laughs> What's so funny over there? You said you don't want to save the goggles. Huh? You said you don't want to save the goggles. Yes, I didn't. I'm trying to show you the wrong way to do things so that uh, you don't do it. All right, something splashes in your eye.
rinse in the eye wash. for 15 minutes. Now, anything you read, if you read this material safety data sheet, if you read any science book on safety, they always say to rinse your eyes for 15 minutes. Now, this is proof that there are stupid people in the world, right? You're never going to stand there for 15 minutes. The water would dry your eyes out so much, it would be ridiculous. What they're trying to tell you here is do it for a long time. Uh, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Make sure you rinse long enough that you rinse all the chemicals out of your water, out of your eyes, excuse me. Uh, that's it. Um, so, you know, keep your face there for a long time. Rinse it for a while. But 15 minutes is kind of unrealistic. But on the quiz, 15 minutes is going to be the right answer. So make sure that's what you write. There will be a quiz sometime soon. It'll have stuff about safety on there. All right. What am I on? 13? All right, 14. In case of fire, tell me and leave. This is the most important step here. Do not fight the fire. This building is made out of cinder blocks. The fire is going to go out very quickly on its own. I don't want you staying here fighting the fire. If you stay here and fight the fire, you might die. Your parents will be upset at school. And that's not a good thing. So, do not fight the fire. Get out of the room. If that exit's blocked, go out that door. Go out through the other room. If both exits are blocked, well, then you got to fight the fire. So are you guys. Me? I'm going to watch you guys leave, and then I'm going to go stand outside with you and count all you guys, and we'll shoot all there. All right, number 15, things you should not do. So these are stupid things that students can do to hurt themselves or other people, and you should not do these things. So, first one, sword fighting with meter sticks. For one thing, you can damage my meter stick. And I love my meter sticks, and I don't want them to be dented or damaged. Also, you could knock over a chemical and splash it in somebody's face. And their face could be disfigured, right? Get all ugly and damaged for life. And then, you know, they're going to become unhappy, and nobody's going to want to marry them because they're going to look ugly. And they're going to become depressed and probably start doing drugs. And by the time they're 31, they might kill themselves. And that'll all be your fault because you want to play with a meter stick. <laughs> <laughs> How come you have all this, like, fire equipment in the room, but we're not allowed to use it? I mean, you like, can use it if you have to. If there's a fire and you want yeah, to Yeah, but you just it. told us if there's a fire, then, like... Yeah, because, so, um... What's the point of this? We're not going to... It's if you have to. If so the, you don't have to. Well, if the exits are blocked, you use, block, you use it. That's what's there for. If you're stuck in here, then you can use it. Why do I think it's stupid for us to learn it if we're not going to use it? But you, well, you, you, listen, if your question right, gets mad one day, of that he that lights both off. of those doors on fire, <laughs> like, oh, and you're stuck <laughs> here, then you're going to spray the fire extinguisher <laughs> on one of the doors. Exactly. Otherwise, you're not going to use it. <laughs> Come on, Peyton. just go with the program. Here. Uh, anytime you work for a big organization, just how you said over there. Anytime you work for a big organization, there's gonna be a lot of waste. That's how it works. Right? Hey, at least we have fire extinguishers, so we can look at them. Don't trip people. If you trip someone, they could fall, they could knock over chemicals, they could splat, well, you get the idea. You, right. you should not do it for people. Yeah, I guess that's a double negative. Good call there. All right, there we go. That's just true. <laughs> yeah, but there's things you shouldn't do. <laughs> She's right. Okay, you guys didn't get it. All right. Uh, let's see. Startle someone, scare someone. I if you scare someone, they could knock over a chemical and you know the story. This last one, believe it or not, this actually happens. 
think my students like to play tag. Yeah, yeah you think they'd be past that, right? Um, don't chase people in my lab. All right. That's it for after the lab. Or no, that's it for during the lab. Uh, we're going to do after the lab. This part's short. Only three things. Okay, so when the lab is over with, number one, dump chemicals where I tell you. Don't dump them down the drain unless I tell you to dump them down the drain. If I tell you to dump in a container, you dump them in the assigned container. If you're dumping them all in the same container, that might be a problem, right? They should probably be separate containers unless the things are allowed to mix. So I will tell you which containers, which chemicals go into. Well, this was supposed to be like number 16. This is go back to the number of system. Well, you can make a dot into 16. It's easy. 17. Wash, glassware. And put it away. Anytime I tell you to wash something in this class, I just mean with water. Right? We're not concerned about killing germs. The chemicals probably do that. We're concerned about rinsing away the old chemicals. So when the next person puts a different chemical in there, it doesn't react to the last thing that's in there. So you just need to use water. 18, wash hands. This one's important. Remember, your hands are much tougher than the rest of your skin and certainly more than your eyes, right? Your hands touch things all day long, so they're less sensitive. You might spill a chemical on there and not feel it. Then you're walking down the hallway, you rub your eye and it starts burning. That's not good. So you want to make sure you wash your hands before you leave here. Just with water, you can use soap. But I mean, the point is just to rinse with water really well and rinse away all the chemicals. All right. A few last minute things I'm doing here. Oh, perfect. All right. Um, we'll call this other stuff. That's right. That's the technical term for it. Okay. Uh, let's see. use pluses. Don't touch gas jets. Like when we're not in the lab. Unless we are using them. In other words, if you're back there just working on a worksheet or something, don't start playing with these and messing around. Then you leave it open, it blows gas in the room. Somebody lights up a cigarette and blows the room up. You know. So don't play around with them. Just so you know, perpendicular is off. This is off, this is off. This is open, parallel. Points the same way as the point, that's open. Make sure they're always off. Uh, right to know. Should be a T there also. Right to know and MSDS. These two will go together. Right to know. You have the right to know about any chemical that's used in this building since you go to school here. There is a central file in the main office that has material safety data sheets for every single chemical that's used here. You could go down there and ask to see the material safety data sheet for a chemical that we're using in here. That'll never really happen. Realistically, you just Google it and find the MSDS there. This is an MSDS. Unless you go into the Army or the Navy, you'll probably never see these again. Every company in the United States that produces chemicals is required to make one of these for every single product that they make. It has all the safety information on it. Health hazards, corrosive to eyes, injures eyes, skin, blah, blah, blah. This is for Clorox bleach. Hazardous ingredients, sodium hypochlorite, sodium hydroxide, so anything that's hazardous is up here. You know what the chemicals are. Uh, special protection, transportation, spill procedure, reactivity, that matters to us, right? Chemistry is all about what reacts with what. Is it flammable or not, right? Clorox bleach doesn't burn, so you don't have to worry about that, and so on. All right, make it one of these in the side. Okay, so this is an MSDS. Um, like I said, you can just Google these and you'll find there's different ones for every single product. Like if they have a mint smelling bleach, it'd be different from a lemon smelling bleach, they have separate ones. 